everybody. I'm chairing tonight because we don't have Kirby. Um, so bear with me as I figure out what we're doing. Um, all right, so does everyone see the agenda? Um, we've got a few kind of varied things to look through tonight. Um, and we can call the meeting to order and approve the agenda. We usually do a motion for this, right, Mike? Yeah, you can do that or you can, without objection, assume the uh, agenda is approved. Okay, any objections so that we can, to the agenda or adjustments to the agenda? No. Thanks, Aaron. <laughs> Okay, we'll, we'll consider the agenda approved. Um, comments from the vice chair. I do have some comments. Um, I, uh, Aaron is, and Mike are aware, and so is Kirby, um, but I accepted a new job and it's back home in Anchorage, um, Alaska. So I am leaving town uh, way too soon here, <laughs> the beginning of the month. Um, so I will be stepping off of the planning commission, obviously. Um, yeah, I don't have a whole lot else to say about it, but, but that is that. And, um, I'll follow up with everybody, uh, to say thanks and what on in writing later. I can't do that right now. <laughs> can I, can I just say Marcella, we really miss you. I feel like you put in a lot of work in the planning commission and I, Really appreciate it. So I just wanted to make sure I could say that before you left. <laughs> uh, thank you, Ariane. I appreciate that. It's been a really pleasure with being here with all of you. Thank you for for your planning commission work, but also representing the city and the RPC. Ah, oh, yes, yes, RPC. I'm so pleased. Gabe will be um, well. At least Gabe, you're our alternate alternate member. So um, I suppose that's a discussion. You know whether we want to have somebody else add on as the um, represent the commissioner. Um, but I'll, I'll let you guys. We could we could talk about that tonight if we wanted to add it to the agenda. But um, let's see how far we get. Okay. Um, any general business from members of the public? not on the agenda. Okay, should we move to the economic development chapter? Yep, do we wanna pull that up or do we wanna just, cause it's on, the, it's on the Google Drive. Yeah, it's on the Google Drive. I've got it pulled up here. I'm happy to share if that would be helpful, but um, do others have it pulled up? Or would a share, let me know if a share screen would be helpful. Might be helpful for our television viewers. Yeah, good point. Okay. <clears throat> All right, so. And Marcel, I'll just note, it looks like Peter has his hand up here. Oh. Sorry, I didn't see that, Peter. Go ahead. Um, I, I, I'm obviously a member of the public, not on the commission. Um, I did uh, ask Mike uh, earlier today if he could give me access to this, and so I have had a chance to read it. And I do have some comments and suggestions <laughs> and questions. So I hope it's okay if I talk when those things come up. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Yeah, and um, please, I didn't have a, a particular way I wanted to walk through this. I was, you know, Kirby has gone through, as you can, as everyone can see in here and made several comments and adjustments. I went through it a little bit earlier today and just tweaked one or two things that read sort of funny to me. Um, but I figured we'd kind of go by comments um, to direct our review of this rather than walk through it kind of line by line. Um, so maybe we can start in the introductory piece. Um, I think it'll, it'll be clear that Kirby's kind of rewritten the, you know, in his, he's done edits in the body of it, but, uh, the reason you see big chunks, you know, crossed out is because he just rewrote the paragraphs to be cleaner so that, um, his edits were taken into account.
Are, are, are you asking for comments on that? Now? Yeah, go for it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I, I have a few. Um, I, the, 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 the description of the of, um, population of Montpelier uh, seems good, but there's one thing that seems to me to be missing, unless I'm, uh, unless I'm wrong. <laughs> seniors aren't mentioned. Mike, don't seniors constitute a fairly large percentage of the population? Of Montpelier? Um, meaning what from economic, that there are not that many in the workforce or that? Well, well a, a number of things. Uh, um, many seniors are not in the workforce. Um, a good number of seniors live on fixed incomes. Um, seniors um, have particular challenges uh, related to transportation and shopping and walking the streets and so forth. I mean, I, I, you, the, this the document is very good about um, referencing the way in which economic development overlaps with housing and transportation. Um, but some of the statements that are made just um, I, I found myself saying, yeah, but what about us? I'm, I'm, a, I'm 79. So I'm thinking, what about us? I mean, uh, I, I, am I wrong? I mean, what, what percentage of, of, of Montpelier's population are over the age of, let's just say, 60? I don't have the number off the top of my head. It's something I'd have to, I'd have to look up. All right. Well, I, I, I would just suggest that, that, that some thought be given. I mean, uh, disabled people are mentioned. Um, uh, uh, BIPOC people are not mentioned per se, although that might be a good point, even though they're a minority and a small minority in Montpelier. But I think if we're talking about, well, we mentioned, uh, for example, low income people, people who can't afford to live in Montpelier because they're uh, a can't, workers who can't afford it. I, I just think that to keep in mind that there's a fairly large group there. Anyway, that's one point. Second thing is, I, I, I think I guess I'll just clarify on that real quick. What what the the strategies and the implementation was looking at was was two basic groups. We broke economic development into into the workforce and into the business community. So that's we kind of broke things into two places. So I mean, as, as much as there are going to be people who are not in the workforce, um, you know, kids under 16, um, people who are retired, they don't really fall into either business owners or members of the workforce. That's not to say they're not consumers, but most of our strategies, most of what we've been talking about in, in this chapter on economic development is, um, you know, we're not doing um, economic development to help seniors come out of retirement unless that's our strategy. If that is a strategy, then we that that's something that probably warrants conversation. That would be, I guess, a little bit of my thoughts for, for that. That's, that's why the focus is on those, the groups that are being discussed is because of the, the way we've structured the implementation into those two categories. I, 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 I understand that, but let me just ask this. When you give percentages, those are percentages of the workforce or percentages of the population? I'd have to see specifically where it's where it's referenced if it's. Well, I, I we don't have to go through it right now, but you would just when you go back and take a look and you're talking about percentages, if you're talking about percentages of the workforce, then I, I then I think that's fine. But if you're talking about percentages of the population, then I think you should, uh, uh, um, you know, the census, 2010 census, there it is. Montpelier has so many jobs. A uh, blank of, of them were filled by residents. Um, see, that's talking about residents. Yeah. And then, and, and Mike, what what does net what does net commuters mean? This influx of commuters is an impact on our community service. Our population during the day swells to more than fourteen thousand six hundred net commuters. Well, it was, you notice when it was struck out, it says when the net commuters are counted. So unfortunately, the striking that kind of confuses the statement a little bit. Okay, well, that needs so to be there's a net com commuters. So 
there's 6,800 people that come into the city every day. Those are the, the, in, the inns. And there's 1,000, or uh, where is it? Uh, there's, I don't know what the exact number is, but there's also a percentage of people who live in Montpelier who do not work in Montpelier, so they leave. So during the day, we have added in a bunch of people and we've lost a bunch of people. When you net the commuters, the ins and the outs, then you end up with the city of Montpelier basically during the day is a population of about 14,600. Okay, well, but uh, yeah, so if, if you, now that sentence probably needs to be fixed, it doesn't have to be fixed right now. But but point is, that, okay, here's what you say, the population almost doubles during the day. Well, that's, is that again, is that the total population, including kids and seniors, or is that the population of, of um, people who are in the work or, you know, workforce age people? Well, yeah, I think that's, 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 that is the, the population. The population of Montpelier is about 8,000. So it just about doubles the population. Okay, so that would be an example of where I, I think it's a little misleading because many seniors are homebound, aren't, you know, aren't, in, in down, aren't downtown, kids are in school. I, I, I just want to make sure that we're not mixing um, population statistics in a way that isn't really doesn't really capture the, the source of the problem. And I'll tell you what I think does capture the source of the problem that I didn't see anywhere, which is traffic. Downtown traffic, because of the way Montpelier is, there's only two ways to get across town if you want to go up Route 12, for example, all those trucks that go right through uh, downtown. To me, that's much more of an impact than doubling the population when a lot of that population isn't down isn't downtown. So so I just think I, I, somewhere in here should be mentioned the traffic patterns um, that 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 impact downtown. Yeah. Well, we have a transportation plan that also addresses a number of those, but this this chapter there was kind of meant to help address the the services the services question that comes up with the uh, the commuters, the commuters add a specific factor to our, our services. So, okay. But yes, we can. All right. And one, one other thing, when you do the calculate, when you, when you mentioned that the, the, how many people work for the state and so forth, I didn't see NGOs anywhere. Uh, there are a ton of non-government organizations in Montpelier. That's a fairly large, I would think would be fairly large uh, number of, of people working there. You you, meant, you mentioned uh, finance and, and insurance, but I think the NGOs should be right in there with that. The finance and insurance sector, I would say finance, insurance, and NGOs. It's not a sector un, unto itself under the state, the state piece, the state um, statistics. So if your NGOs have um, attorneys and they're going to come under um, a, a one section and if there really depends what the NGO is doing depends on where it's going to fall. Um, it might fall under education, it might fall under um, professional and business services, uh, but it's, it's not as significant, it's certainly not as significant a sector as the ones that are listed there. Th those are the, the big ones, finance and insurance. Um, Retail, okay. education, healthcare, according okay. to the statistics. All right. I guess you we're captive to the statistics that are available to us. Okay. They occupy an awful lot of buildings. <laughs> All right. Thanks. Thanks. Um, we made a couple of tweaks there just to uh, on some of the sentences to make some clarifications. But um, yeah, and as far as um, well, never mind. Yep. Okay. Any other concerns in the introductory portion, which is the first two and a half pages here with all the edits? Oh, actually, I, after other people talk, there are some other ones that I, I didn't realize that you were going all the way through that. Oh, sorry. I was just sort of broadly, broadly speaking, you, you should feel free to jump in unless. 
Does is, anyone else? Is, is the dog park and recreational tourism and the hotel in this, in this opening section? Um, that was later. Okay, good. I'll wait till then. I think. Oh no, sorry, it is in this introductory paragraph. It's right in the middle. So yeah, growth in hospitality and tourism sectors could help counter the problems caused by online retailers and remote work. Um, talking about recreation, um, by a dog park was mentioned. The hotel is also mentioned here, um, which I guess I wanted to ask the group about because there's a section towards the end that Kirby has highlighted to say that I don't know if we want to talk about that hotel. So if, if so, we might just strike it from here as well. Well, what I was going to say is that the, this kind of recreational, uh, our parks are attractive places to hike, cross country ski and mountain bike. Yeah, but that's really mostly for residents. People, Montpelier is not going to be a destination for those things. We're not stow. We're not the, you know, we're not mad, you know, uh, Waitsfield. I, I, I think this is, I think this is misplaced. Uh, the, the, these things are for, these are great trails and so forth for people who live here. I don't think they're going to attract people. So I, I, I wonder about this whole idea of recreational tourism as being an attraction. Maybe the, maybe the bike path, maybe. Once it's really cross Vermont, then I think maybe that would be the case. Yeah, I definitely think uh, the bike path is one with the increased uh, length and the extensions that are going off on the side. I also, the only one I wasn't sure about was mountain biking. I do think cross-country skiing, there really isn't cross-country skiing in the immediate kind of East Montpelier, aside from Millstone Trails. No, there's the, there's the new trails out in North Branch. Right, that's what I'm thinking. It's like North Ranch and Hubbard Park and the connectors there and then north, the north. I know the ones up on North Street are not quite as, well, they're on private land so they can be fluctuate a little bit. But um, in terms of like our, you really would have to go pretty far if you're in the air. I mean, I think, you know, somebody from Stowe might not be coming to Montpelier to, to cross country ski, but I think the towns right around us may very well come to Montpelier to cross country ski and then hike. And I think this reflects what's the um, identified goal of um, certainly the parks director. Um, you know, we've taken a lot of comment from him on, from Alec Ellsworth on uh, the, the goals of growing our recreational economy. That mm -hmm. is one of the pieces that he wanted to see. Uh, it's in the, the strategic plan, the, the council's strategic plan. And it's why it's reflected here is that there, there is an interest that if we're going to, to, to have tourism as one of our focuses, that uh, there was an interest in you know, building out our complete streets and being able to use that, um, the complete streets, the bike paths, the parkland, um, as an opportunity for to, to grow that sector of our economy. So uh, it was there as a focus. Uh, and that's yeah. why that's why I think it's in there is because of Alex uh, push. Mm -hmm. um, is dog park disc golf course are those and the boating and tubing, do those come directly from Alec as well? They seem oddly like very specific, and I just wanted to make sure that we weren't just spitballing. Well, dog park seems a little weird. People aren't going to come to Montpelier in order to go to a dog park. I think the idea is if folks come to Montpelier, which I think we have to say that people do come to Montpelier. It is the state capital. I think folks come from... Um, you know, that they, we can market it as a place where folks can come for the day and they can do, you know, the state house. They can also go for a walk or, um, or, or bring their bike, or if it's the winter, they can go for a cross-country ski. 
um, and then come and eat at a restaurant before they go home. So you, you can kind of make a day of it the same, same way you might um, in Stowe or um, another town with a big ski area like that but just in a, in a different way but I think I think we have to recognize that Montpelier is indeed a destination just given the fact that it is the capital and it's nice when there's sort of a variety of things that we can market to folks uh, to be able to do here rather than only be in the downtown I don't know what the percentages are but I've done some different community engagement at the farmer's market and apparently our farmer's market is like one of the, on some list of like the best things to go. And so people do come up here and stay in a hotel or an Airbnb. And I, I'm sure they do some of these other things as long as well as uh, shop at the farmer's market. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's, it's fair. You know, the point is well taken that we are not, you know, the scale of the recreation is not Stowe. It is not Killington. Um, but nice to have the options and nice to kind of talk about it as something we would want to grow. I just have one last thing, uh, a, a pretty significant typo in what Mike paragraph eight, I can't see it here. It says, does not believe, I think it should be the believes. Um, paragraph seven, maybe. Oh, here. As the city does not believe we cannot achieve one of these goals without success to the other. The city believes we cannot achieve, right? Yeah, it's a double negative. Yeah. Um, Kirby left a note here saying to clarify this paragraph. I read through it. I think it's, I think his edits do well enough for them for the time being. Uh, did, if anyone had any thoughts on that, I'd welcome them. Kirby also had another comment down here regarding the hotel um, and whether, you know, he basically just said, not sure this is worth mentioning. So I would welcome any thoughts on that as well. I wonder if that's why the hotel is left up above, mentioned above. I mean, I think in our conversation on our last meeting, we talked about the fact that this separate from the hotel proposal, the city had done studies and that there was a need for an additional hotel in the city. Mm -hmm. I don't know that this part, I think you could just get rid of that whole paragraph. Thanks. Yeah, and, I would. It mentions hotels up above. So yeah, leave the mention up above. And if we wanted to talk about the TIFF, situation at, in that sentence up above, I think we could, but the, I think this sentence could probably go. It's a third rail for sure. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna delete it. Yeah, I think the hotel just ties into the, the, the growing the tourism economy. And I think that was just the, you know, if we want, if we truly wanna be growing that, that sector of our economy, we are missing out on a lot because we don't have the downtown hotel space. It's, it is, it is a significant, you know, just by way of example, the um, Vermont or is it green mountain brew brewing beer festival? Um, whatever that is, it's generally in Burlington. It's been around, they've wanted to be in Montpelier, but they simply can't, there's not enough hotel space. Um, when Northfield has graduations, a lot of the people go to um, Waterbury because there's simply not places in Montpelier, hotel, hotel rooms in Montpelier. Um, we've missed out on a number of other festivals uh, and stuff in the downtown simply because we just don't have enough um, hotel space to be able to support even, even just basic small weekend type events and uh that that's been one of the the things if we want to grow our tourism sure we're never going to be stow and we're never going to be um these these big resorts but we could certainly very much grow and and increase the vibrancy of our downtowns by getting and increasing the number of hotels and, and tourist space it'll help our our restaurants it'll help our small boutiques and it'll help 
you know, and then we've got to have something that makes us unique. And, um, you know, the vision they were having was, uh, was an opportunity to, to get a space to stay that has um, opportunities where you're really quick to, to have family recreation was a lot of the focus. You know, how can we get, you know, bike paths that are safe to bring your young kids on, um, as well as intermediate, as well as advanced, as well as on-road biking, off-road off mountain biking, um, in the winter skiing, snowshoeing. Um, you know, again, we're, we're, we're not trying to really compete with the, the ski resorts, but at the same time, a lot of people like to vacation and stay in these, uh, in these downtowns. Uh, it's, Montpelier would be a great destination to bring a family, hang out, go to restaurants, um, and have those types of things. And I think that was a little bit of the vision. <clears throat> okay, what else on this introductory paragraph? And maybe in this section, the relation to other chapters, we mention housing, transportation, community services. Anything in the summary of past efforts section? This is the designated growth center, Montpelier Alive, designated downtown. Um, I, I, I have a comment here, sure. I, which, I, which I've shared with the commission before. Um, I, I realized that the 2016 economic development strategic plan is the plan we have, but I think it's a very flawed plan. And the less reference that is made to it, the better, as far as I'm concerned. Um, and I'd be glad to at some point revisit that plan was created under a different mayor with a different, very different city council, very different circumstances than we have now. Um, and it, 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 basically, it basically says we should become like Stowe. We should be an exclusive community. And we are talking about Montpelier being an inclusive community. So I, look, I, I noticed that, um, that that plan is due to be replaced you guys are going to start working on it. Mike is, is going to start working on it, 2022. But the less said about that plan, the better. Okay, noted. Yeah, I think I'll, I'll point out that plan. Um, oh, Mike, you're. Um, it sounds like maybe your microphone is picking up from from far away. Uh, is it having some issues? Yeah, it sounds like. It just sounds like you're very far away from the microphone. <laughs> Or maybe is your computer, is there a different microphone in the room that it might have tried to hook up to? No, it's just this. Is it any better now? A, a little bit. A bit better. All right. Um, so I was just wanted to comment that what the 2016 Economic Development Strategic Plan talked about, it, again, it's referencing, it's looking at this from a business standpoint. And what it was targeting is that we need to, is basically making a comparison um, that communities need to identify what they want to be. Um, you know, kind of, kind of the way businesses are. You can you can target yourself as a as a discount retailer, or you can target yourself as a high end retailer. And the businesses that try to sit in the middle and try to be the best of both, whether you're talking about retail or cars or anything else end up being out-competed and don't end up doing as well. Um, you usually have to pick something. And so what the, what the 2016 EDSP said was that we are a very expensive place to be, uh, especially in comparison to a place like Barry City. So if you wanted retail space in Barry City, you could rent at you know, $4 a square foot. You could get something, you know, three, 
three to five dollars square foot, maybe up to eight if it's a nice one. Here you're looking 16, 18, 20 dollars a square foot. So you're not going to be an entrepreneur. You're not going to do a lot of lower. You've, you've got to be generating revenue. So that usually means you're looking for a target of something that's going to be, you've got to have then looking for a premium destination. And if you want to be a premium destination, then we have to present ourselves like a premium destination. In other words, make the downtown look nice. You're not going to be a premium destination for businesses if you're not, uh, if, you, if you don't have a good downtown. So he compared us to the efforts that uh, Waterbury, who also is a premium destination, he, you know, he explained that this is a place that has higher rents, and, and they are investing in making their downtown look nice uh, to draw in those, you know, uh, prohibition pigs and those those other places. So that's what he was targeting was really just looking at the reality of our business climate. Um, uh, you know, Caledonia Spirits can be here because they're a, a successful business. So that doesn't mean it's it's can't have good jobs for for people. Uh, and, and everything else, but it's just looking from a business standpoint, it's very difficult for certain businesses to succeed in Montpelier. They may be better suited if you want to, if you're looking for a, a discounter space, uh, Barry City had always cornered itself on that because it could provide space relatively cheaply. So we could grow businesses when I was in Barry City very well. And you know, since 2008, last time I checked, since 2008, Barry City had a thousand jobs. That's great. You can do that um, if you understand who you are, what your limitations are, and then market yourself correctly. And so what they're saying is it's tough for us to be marketing as a discount downtown um, when our taxes are higher, when our rents are higher. That's, that's, where, that's what they're getting. They're not trying to push out the poor people uh, that, you know, they're just looking at the reality of what our business businesses look like, what our, what our environment, business environment looks like, and then making sure that we're uh, making things, build, building a complete environment that would be successful. I suggest that anybody who would, uh, is going to think about including this, read the report and see whether Mike's uh, uh, account of it is more accurate than mine. I think it the totally bogus argument that was made in that report. It's an elitist, it was an elitist document, and it was intended to push out poor people. And the and the gentrification of downtown is not a matter of making downtown look nice. It was to make it be more like Stowe, an elite gentrified town. Read it and decide whether you want to include it. I think it's a big mistake. Okay, thanks. Thanks for that, Mike and, and Peter. Um, I think it's mentioned here in the section about summary of past efforts, um, which is fairly fairly limited, um, you know, in terms of it's just something that we had done in the past. And um, you know, its fallout was to create this separate Montpelier Development Corp. So I think, you know, if depending as we go forward, um, depending on the timing, you know, if if that document, the de the economic development strategic plan is indeed due to be updated, um, Mike, then it may be when we get further into the fall, and it may be it makes sense to reference that newly updated plan if if the timing works out, um, which we could then go back and add to that add to this later. Cool. All right. The rest of the document is aspirations and goals, which we've talked about in a separate, kind of the separate um, space. The rest of that is just comments. Anything else for this document? Nobody, if nobody else has anything else, I've got a couple other things, but uh, let me just back off until members speak. No problem. It may be fine for you to go.
Yeah, go ahead, Peter. Okay. Um, tax stabilization is mentioned a couple of times, and I don't know whether the um, commission um, is going to be taking any kind of position about tax stabilization, um, but I think it's important in discussing tax stabilization to um, be clear about the pros and cons. I'm not saying I'm against tax stabilization, I'm not. But I think that uh, tax stabilization has to be handled very carefully. There are too many bad stories about tax stabilization in Vermont, about companies getting tax breaks, tax stabilization, uh, and then when the period is over, just leaving, Green Mountain Coffee being the, the, the most uh, egregious example. So uh, just, just if, we're, if you're gonna mention tax stabilization, be, be fair about it. Um, there are several references to the built environment. Um, and again, I'm gonna get back to the downtown traffic issues. I, I really, I haven't read the traffic uh, section, so this may be covered in it, but it would seem to me that in a master plan, we really need to be thinking about other ways to handle trucks and other, you know, traffic that is passing through Montpelier to get up, to get north of us. Um, and I mean, Barry Street and Main Street you know, are the only sort of ways through. And, uh, you know, that, that's, a, that's a really a, a tough problem when you have these diesel trucks, you know, blasting their way through Main Street. Um, again, I don't have a, a, a definite solution, but I think it's something that needs to be looked at. And the, the third thing I would say is that um, the history, particularly that paragraph that talks about the businesses that have come in, um, shows the uh, increasingly passive approach that uh, has been taken in the um, planning community development department. Uh, basically, the things that have come in here in the last five or six years have come in at the, you know, as projects that private people wanted to relocate here. They were facilitated by the department, but there's not been an active development of business or housing in the city for the last, I don't know, eight, eight years or so. And I think that that's something which, um, you know, pe people have questions about. I mean, the Grossman's lot becoming Wind River, that lot stood empty for, I can't remember, I don't know, six or seven years. Why, why wasn't that, why wasn't Montpelier going out and finding uh, 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 somebody to come in there? And does, was Wind River ultimately really the best solution? Is that the best kind of thing to have there? Uh, maybe it is. I don't know. But um, I, I, I think if I were writing this report, I would be saying for the future, we're going to have a much more active um, uh, approach to business development in Montpelier than we've had. We're not going to rely on people coming to us and saying, hey, we want to build this here. How about helping us out? Uh, give us some advice or whatever it is. Peter, do you have a, just for my own, um, just to help me understand, do you have an example of a, what, what it looks like to be more active, particularly in the case when, you know, I'm thinking of like uh, Sabin's Pasture, it's privately owned um, and they can sit on it as long as they want. Do you have an example of something that would be, Maybe that's happened here or in a different town that was more of an accident. Yeah, I, I just did. Uh, I, I think the uh, Grossman's lot was a perfect example. That lot was empty for, I can't remember how many years, seven, eight years. We, we could have made an effort to go out and try to attract a business to locate in that lot. Um, there's also, I mean, also another thing you could do is you can go to the owners, like for example, Con the Connor Brothers own a lot of uh, business uh, properties, like the, uh, um, the um, is that the former Ethan Allen uh, buildings over there, right, you know, uh, right near, near Agway. Um, you know, th 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 those could attract businesses. 
I think they, you know, they, some of the offices are occupied by state state offices and so forth. We we've been we've been willing to say, oh yeah, we're such an attractive place. The state will come in and use you you know, but but the state isn't the same as having. I mean, I, I'm nothing wrong with having the state, but there are places where you can build. I'm not talking about Saban's Pasture, where the the city has tried to develop Saban's Pasture. They've w- tried to work with the owners uh, on that. I don't I don't fault, although you know I don't fault them on on that. But 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 business properties like the, the, a good example is the um, the granite sheds. Um, those are owned by the Connor brothers, I, uh, and they and they are themselves doing it. But they stood empty for twenty years, I think. I can't even remember how when the, when, when. Okay, so there are places where we could have had. Uh, look, if you look up at um, um, uh, uh, sorry Morrisville. Very, very active uh, uh, development uh, group, he, and and Mike was in Barry, very, very active in developing. But Montpelier, we're 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 just, we, we're just so laid back. We think people are going to come to us, and th- and then people who come to us are people like the Boves, and everybody goes crazy. Well, uh, okay, but they came to us. What's Mike supposed to do? Say, oh no, you guys are bad guys. I'm not saying. Okay. Yeah, thanks. I appreciate it. I appreciate the background or the more more detail there. Um, on the commu- on the tele, uh, sorry, the transportation piece. I think that your concerns were more uh, more directly addressed, definitely in the transportation plan. Um, so I, I feel I feel like you know we just nod to it here, uh, but I think the details um, that you're talking about with you know, passing through and also traffic in the area um, is addressed in that that chapter. In, in that chapter, do, do we talk about Barry Street? Because I, I think Barry Street has great opportunity to be a really inclusive street with a combination of, of, of different incomes and uh, uh, some businesses and some offices and some services and some residences. Um, and it runs right along, you know, the, the the bike path, and it runs right along the river. And if you know, I mean, I I can just imagine, you know, a kind of a one way street arrangement to have that become a very vibrant uh, sort of community. I've seen this in 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 other towns, a little bit like Montpelier, where they've taken what was once an industrial, and, and I think that was the idea of Stonecutter's Way. You know, and I think Stonecutter's Way, you know, uh, does it, but it's a little, a little more removed. So I, I think some real thought, and the, you know, the bridges can be made one way. Uh, you know, we could have some alternating bridges. So you come across a Pioneer Street, you go out uh, um, Granite Street, you come across Main Street, you go out. You know, some some real nice, some real nice city planning that is related to handling traffic and developing um, a kind of mix, mixed use, uh, uh, you know, corridor, if you will, going from the transit center all the way out to, uh, um, um, a bar, uh, you know, Caledonia Spirits. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I, I know Barry Street is addressed. I don't recall that it's addressed quite in that much detail, but it is definitely a focus, especially at its intersection with Main Street. I think re- related, I'll just add that I think it's maybe not um, either as prominently evident in this, any specific chapter, but in terms of an action item, looking at the future of the rail line, and it's certainly not a short-term you know, project, but, but really looking at the, the missed opportunity or the potential for what that space could be utilized for um, mm-hmm. in, in that same area that could certainly be a part of of any kind of long-term vision for re, for either redevelopment or development uh, of that Barry Street corridor. Mm-hmm. Of course, you want to talk about something that's owned by 
people who might not be interested in doing that. <laughs> it's a, it's owned by the state of Vermont, you know, and it's it's probably the least used rail line. It, it, it definitely in the in the state. I don't know about the Northeast or possibly you know the country. Um, are you sure it's owned by the? It's owned by. The, I think it's regulated. Is it owned by the owned state? Owned by the state of Vermont. The, and and the 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 granite companies lease it or or use it. And Mike, how does that work? The rail line is uh, the state owns it and it leases it to the rail operator, which is um, the 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 Mount if there's a rail company that, that basically operates it. The only thing, there are only a handful of trains that are running. So they have some contracts for shipping granite. Um, that's what the bunch of stuff has been moved. But there are also a couple of deliveries that go to like fuel oil deliveries to Toronto and a few other uh, small ones. But it's, it's a very underutilized resource. Um, we, we put in a petition. We, we worked hard the first couple of years I was here to try to get the state to let us investigate um, setting up um, use, using the rail for for um, commuter rail between Mary City and Montpelier. And you know, we went through a lot of arguments, and they didn't want to have any part of it, and they fought us every every way and told us how it wouldn't work. And, we're like, all right, so that's that's why that project isn't there anymore. But we, we invested a lot of effort, wrote a lot of grants, um, and the state pretty much killed every every opportunity to to invest, even to investigate it. Um, and then when they did, they did some work on their own, and they basically rent part of the fund, but they railroaded it by um, basically. Making taking all of the assumptions of the most expensive things. Like, well, if you're going to upgrade it, it was going to cost a hundred million dollars to fix up the rail between right, right. your center and Barry City. It cost a hundred million dollars, and basically they were upgrading it to like you know the, the premium rail line, and everything was going to be replaced. They're going to rip out six feet of fill and completely replace all six feet of base, plus new everything, so and it was going to be a hundred million dollars. And then they came to a year later and ripped up and built a mile of track at a million dollars. You know, so they're okay. not worth the rail division is really I mean it's a disappointment, but they're really the, the most worthless department I had to deal with the city for eight uh, for eight years and or five years and I had, had to deal with them for eight years here and they're about worthless to, to try to work with. It's a disappointment. Right. All right, how are we feeling about the chapter? Anything else, Peter? Did you have any other uh, items you wanted to address with us or anyone else? I, I don't, that's it, that's it. Okay, well, we appreciate your uh, attention to this and bringing up those items. Um, this is an initial chapter and uh, once, you know, once we start doing some public outreach uh, with this chapter, uh, along with the other chapters later in the fall, we will have lots more opportunity to um, see it all together and make adjustments to make sure everything uh, works. Well, uh, so let me just talk to that point about pu uh, public um, uh, engagement. Um, public engagement in Montpelier, as you all know, is very, is tricky. Um, and and I, I think the, the really, what you guys need to think about is the timing. You, you, you do want to go out with something that reads well, that, that paints a picture, that you know gives people a good sense of what's what what you're thinking about. But you also need to do it in a way that people don't feel that there's a fait accompli and anything they say isn't going to count. And I see Gabe is on this call, and I think he knows what I'm talking about because he ran into that with his public engagement on his um, his uh, uh, Isabel Circle uh, 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 project. You, you know, they're not very far along. He was trying to present a picture, but they saw that picture and they went, "Oh, this is 
you're going ahead and you haven't talked to us and you know that kind of stuff so I, I don't know. I don't know the answer, but it'd be really great to figure out a process, something more like what seems to be happening with the Elks Club, where you do bring people in at an early stage, really at an early stage, where you don't just say, here's what we have, you know, oh, yeah, they, you know, take it or leave it, or at least that's the way they feel. And, and I think you guys saw this a little bit with the zoning regulation changes. I mean, I'm not saying that the people who objected to it wouldn't have objected no matter what, but it might have been better to try to bring them in a little earlier, get that, get them, let them express their opinion and then uh, about those things and work out some of I mean, Mike, Mike's point was just now was a very good one about the state making the worst case scenario. And that's what, um, what's her name? Sandy Vitsium does with the density requirement. She makes the worst case scenario. And it would be really great to have her have her do that in a smaller group and to be able to say to her, Sandy, wait a second. You know, and that because Mike Mike's got a very good response to that. It, it still has to go through review and so forth. And most of those things wouldn't be able to be built, et cetera. But more dialogue. So I, I don't know how you guys are planning to handle this whole um, master plan. I know you're thinking about having an online version of it, but which which is, I think, a great idea. But timing is everything, I think. So you know, I'm the only person who I think, well, I'm certainly the only person, the citizen who's here today. And every time I've come, I've been the only one. I don't know how often you get ordinary people in, in your meetings. I'm guessing not very often. No, not very often. And this is, you bring up a good point, something that, you know, we have been thinking about, um, more pointedly, well, we've been thinking about it for a while, but more, more pointedly, um, since the the zoning um, discussion, um, and yeah, we're still, we're brainstorming ideas for how to do outreach well um, around that issue, and then, um, and I think we're going to talk about that next on the agenda, actually, and then, um, you know, with an eye for how we would do that in the future, um, in the fall when when we've got more. You know, because it's a balance between having enough for people to comment on and also not being super confusing. And um, and also, you know, of course, we don't want to make people think, you know, that it is a done deal when it certainly is not. So point well taken and definitely something we've started to talk about more. OK, great. All right. Thank you guys for uh, giving me a chance to <laughs> offer my opinion on various things. OK, awesome. I'll, Thanks I'll for being here. I'm going to go eat dinner. Bye. Okay, thanks. Thanks, Peter. Appreciate it. All right. So does anyone want me to see anything else on the chapter? Um, I think we want to approve it tonight. Are we ready to do that? I'll, I'll move approval of the economic development chapter. Thank you. Uh, motion by Ariane. I second. Second by Gabe. All those in, oh, any discussion? Any additional discussion? <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstaining? Okay, awesome. Do you need anything else from us on that, Mike, or are we good to go for now? No, we'll be good. Okay. Okay, next on the agenda is to discuss doing policy outreach first. Oops, sorry, did I hear? No, just background. Uh, discuss doing policy outreach first for the solar access and shading amendment rather than drafting language. Um, Mike, can I turn it over to you for that one? Yes. So Kirby actually wanted us to wait until we had uh, John here to kind of pick up, re pick up this conversation. So I was working on. Um, some pieces and I thought based on some of the conversations that we've had um, at, at the last few planning commission meetings that maybe what we need to do is rather than have me come up with some of the draft language and, and explain what we want to do is maybe we put together some of what John and uh, Jeff and some other folks have put together on the shading trying to do a little public education and outreach and get input asking asking people for what should the city's policy be it's a lot easier for me to write regulations to implement policy
policy um, if I know what the policy is. So I thought maybe we could focus more on trying to put together some some information documents rather than putting together some draft language. Um, and again, I'm not sure when we're going to have time to kind of roll out and get this public input, but my thought was, you know, maybe we should focus a little bit more on the policy. We seem to have a pretty good grasp of what we want to say and then kind of leave it open to the public to see where they want to go. And hopefully we'll get input from the council because really, that's what did us in last time. Uh, I don't know. My sense is that it's, it's fairly technical and in the weeds. And if we are going to be looking for conducting some public outreach around the plan, that maybe we'd want to concentrate our efforts around that rather than this very specific policy that I, th I think we can fairly clearly outline. And, and I didn't go to the city council meeting, but I think the, the issue was more that we just didn't have anything to replace it or, or that we didn't present them with a clear option to just say, We're, we'll go with this. We gave them, we either gave them too much or too little. And I think we just need to be clear. But um, yeah, that's that's my two cents. Also say that I haven't, I haven't followed through on the homework that was assigned to me, so you can all just disregard what I said. <laughs> the other concern I have is that if we uh, we go down that road, the people who come out do not necessarily represent the actual public opinion. They represent the people who are particularly interested in achieving certain policy goals, and that if we did education, you know, to the city council. Uh, that it would be a lot more clear exactly what was going on, and then they they'd be in a better position to get public input. I just feel like it's it never should have been adopted. I mean, again, as I said last time, I went searching for anything that looks like what we have, and nobody has anything like what we have. So uh, I think I think it's maybe go back to the city council with some education whenever that makes sense. Yeah, and I. Um noting that I won't be around to help with this. I, I don't, I mean, it's, it could be that we just didn't have a good alternate, good alternate language for the city council kind of on the spot, but it also could be, you know, an issue of they just were hearing, like Gabe said, the people who were there and didn't have us, we didn't, you know, we weren't able to say, oh, but we heard, you know, support for this in an earlier effort um, and so if we did do our own outreach and we were able to hear some support in that space or, or perhaps we do outreach with the council and then invite folks to come to that as well you know whether we do it in this space or, or their space it could give us um, um, a more well-rounded view or at least an opportunity for that my two cents on where things are. I mean, I'm a little bit with, with John on the opinion of, you know, I, I would rather be spending my public outreach time right now working on, you know, as, as we're rolling through the city plan, getting the city plan public outreach this, and, and not get lost too much trying to spend time on public outreach on this until, until and if we're ready to, to, to do another zoning update, in which you know, maybe we go to city council right, right at the start. Before we or an hour public hearing, we go to city council and say, you know, let's have a public hearing, let's have a public outreach on what you guys want as a policy so we can draft something that city council is willing to support. And come work at that. I, I, I concur <laughs> with that, Mike, that we should just wait until we're doing the next round of zoning amendments and, and roll it into some education and maybe it takes a couple of meetings. I don't think, I mean, when you look at what the issue is, you know, it's um, solar access and shading. 
the many people who want the solar protections. There are very few people out there who are like, no, 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 I'm all for shady. Um, you know, they're just, you know, there is no other side. There's, there's just people who understand the consequences of that. Um, so I think you're right. I think it comes down to really educating the decision makers on, you know, a lot of what John has put together in this presentation. How many non conforming structures? You know, we've talked about 90% conformity um, in our neighborhoods. And yet here we have a rule that. You know, for all the other rules we put in place to go and say, we want to have rules that we could rebuild our wonderful neighborhoods. If something happened, we could rebuild this, this neighborhood because our zoning allows this great neighborhood to be created. And we have one rule that would prevent you actually from doing it, and it's solar shade. And I think just explaining that to city council, I think, would go a long way to helping them to understand that, you know, everyone who's complaining about their neighbor shading their house probably has a house that's neighbor that is shading their neighbor's house or their neighbor's property. And just explaining that dichotomy would go a long way. And I, uh, and I think having general public input is just going to be attractive to the, to the people who are very narrowly defining. I don't want anybody shading any part of my lawn because I might want to plant vegetable garden on that piece of thing. Um, uh, that's who city council heard from, and that's why they put it the way they did, because they heard from that, that group of people who yeah. might want to plant a garden on their property. December 21st. Yeah. Um, well, Mike, uh, I, can't, I can't hear you at all. Yeah, we or, didn't catch that last part, Mike. You're, um, I, I can... I, it might, can I recommend that Mike, maybe you try to jump off and get back on because your microphone is bad. Either that or call in with your phone and just mute the computer. Does it, it work any better if the computer's farther away? Ah, that changed. Oh, there you go. Okay. Yeah, I was, I've been trying to figure out where the microphone is. They tend to hide them on the computers. And so, all right. So that was, that was it. So we'll wait. To, to pick up number six until we've got another zoning revision. That probably won't be till this fall, October, November. Cool, sounds reasonable. Um, I'm in, are we ready to move on to the next item? which is approved position regarding whether the city should allow the DRV to consider reputation or kind of previous compliance history to approve or deny a permit, consider having a public hearing for public input. I had a question on the public hearing, Mike, if we uh, don't believe it is legal, why would we have a public hearing? <laughs> I just wanted to put that in there just in case there was a vote that people wanted to do it. Um, there, it, it is going to be a topic on a council agenda at some point coming up. So one option for you guys, you know, I, I summarized and I sent out to so, uh, John, you weren't at the last meeting. We went into executive session. We went over the details of uh, a decision of, a, of, a, of an opinion by David Rue from Stitzel, Page, and Fletcher. And so we had a little bit more of a detail, but I also sent out an email that I had sent Anne that kind of summarized things. And I kind of think that's the position we were going to. We can't really cut and paste it because it's not really written in, a, in an opinion format, but it kind of goes through and s summarizes things that says it's not legal for us to, to be doing it. Um, and that really what I think what our position should be is we should be reviewing each of our sets of regulations within their own um, jurisdiction. Um, so when we're reviewing zoning, we're looking at the zoning rules. When we're reviewing building, we're looking at the building codes. Um, and where there are violations of those rules, we will enforce those violations. And it sounds simple, but that's pretty much what we've been doing and what we should do. Um, so this is being directed 
um, very directly at Boves. So the Boves project was being proposed or hasn't been proposed yet, but people got wind that they're trying to um, purchase part of the Econo Lodge to put in 40 units of housing and people don't want it. So they want us to, they want the DRB to have the right to deny that permit because they have bad properties in Chittenden County. That's basically what they've asked and the mayor has asked Kirby and therefore asked the planning commission if we would support that effort. And the, after the discussion basically was no, uh, we probably won't. We should just simply enforce our zoning as it's written and enforce violations. So if Boves builds a project that meets zoning, we should approve it. And if, if they violate future health and rental code violations, then we'll enforce on those. So, Mike, I, I read your email and I think it actually encapsulated all of our conversation from last week. So how would we just turn that into something that we, we could say we concur or. Would you like me to, to basically if the sentiment of that email is what you guys would like to support. Um, I could go through and convert that into a letter from the planning commission to the mayor and city council, and then have you guys at the next planning commission meeting approve that letter. I mean, I think it covers a lot of the, it covers all, all, it's a very good summary and it covers all the things that we talked about. So I don't know other people's feelings, but if, if that were in a memo form, I, I would support it. I'm trying to find the, uh, your email, Mike. When did you send it? I'm sorry. Uh, May 9th at 7.09. Oh, is this the Roaches email? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Roaches, Roaches and Broken Locks. That was right after our last meeting. I'm, um, I agree with Gabe for what it's worth. So is it a motion to memorialize your sentiments? <laughs> yeah, do you want an action on that? <laughs> That's a nice way of putting it, memorializing <laughs> the sentiments. Yeah, because I can pretty much try to put that together. And the reason why I left open the possibility is I didn't know if people wanted to get public input on it or not. So I, that's why I put that in there as, a, as an option. But so it was, so I'd read the I'd read this to everyone who doesn't have it, but it's actually quite long. So. I'll probably try to summarize it in a little bit less. I would hate to have to try to enforce this if I was on the DRB. Oh, if it was, if we did what Diane had recommended, yeah, it would be, it would be terrible. I mean, every, the unintended consequences I think would be huge because every, every housing project that comes in, even Downstreet or, or ever north, um, they, they have zoning violations in places and you know, they fix them, but that doesn't mean a violation doesn't get identified and every one of these is going to end up popping up in a, you know, the next project that comes up, you should deny that project because they have a violation in this town. Or, you know. Yeah, how much homework do I do to find out who's got violations if somebody comes in and you know, everybody does these developments and they put them in LLC. So how do I know that, you know, 14 Park Street LLC, who owns that in Barry City? I don't know, but I would have to know that in order to put together a staff report that discusses all the violations of this property owner. Yeah, for what it's worth, I think your email is very good, Mike.
Thanks. I think John had a motion. If anyone wants to second it. <laughs> oh, sorry. Was that a real Was that a real motion to memorialize? <laughs> I second the motion to memorialize Mike's thoughts and sentiments. Okay. Yep. Motion by John. Second by Gabe. Any oh, I'm sorry. Can I just ask? I just have a question. Sure. Additional discussion who, time. Who's memorializing? Who's memorializing it and for memorializing it to forward to City Council? Is that? Good question. Yes, to forward to city council, I believe. And do you want me to bring it back to you guys first for, for final approval at the next meeting? All right. How, how time sensitive is this? I don't think. Uh, give me a second. I'll open up. I didn't get the sense it was super time sensitive. I'm just looking at the the weekly report has future agenda items and seeing where this might if it's on there already. I'm just saying it'd be nice to see it, but if it creates a bottleneck in the process by having us do that, then you know, not necessary. I'll amend the motion to say that, that it'd be nice to see it, but if it creates a bottleneck. <laughs> <laughs> I don't see it on the list of things, so I'd have to check with Bill, but I know there had been a request to have it come back to council, but I don't see it on the, on the future agenda items. Yeah, we've got time. I mean, I, I think it'd be nice to just to take one quick look at it and make sure we're all on the same page with it. But I'm, I'm assuming we will be given the apparent consensus on this one. All right, for review at next meeting. Okay, great. So with that amended motion, then any other discussion? And if not, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstaining? Okay, motion's passed. Thanks, Mike. Yes. All right, and then just to put a fine point on it, I believe that means we don't want to do a specific public hearing for this on our end. Okay, last substantive item on the agenda is update on RFP for city plan consultant. I know right, there so was a little activity there. Yep, so real quick, get back to my stuff here. Um, I sent out notices on Friday. So I sent out a notice to Stone Environmental um, notifying them that we were gonna repost to a limited pool. And I explained to them that it uh, uh, had nothing to do with uh, the quality of their application or anything that we had concerns with, but that if we were gonna increase the budget from 20 to 30,000 and use the municipal planning grant that we were forced to go out and contact others. So we also gave notice to Stone that they could amend their application to reflect the fact that there's an extra $10,000. Maybe there are more activities they wanted to propose doing. So they were notified. And I also sent it to three other firms who were either in Vermont or did business in Vermont um, who uh, had contacted us before about the RFP. So I sent, sent it to three other companies and said, if you're interested, it's on a shorter time frame. So it's due, uh, proposals be due June 17th. So we could have them for the, let's see the timeline, shortlisted by June 22nd and interviews at the June 27th, your June 27th meeting, if we want to have an interview with one or more. So the 27th would be set up for interviewing those candidates. So uh, I've heard back from one company that said they will be proposing. So we'll have at least two. I haven't heard back from the others yet. So, um, and that meets the requirement for anyone who didn't catch that. Um, the municipal planning grant, um, I contacted um, 
Jenny Lavoy, and she said that was fine as long as we reached out to at least a, a couple of additional candidates. So that's what we've done. Okay, thanks for the legwork on that, Mike. So everybody put that June 27th one on your calendar so that we can have for folks with that one. I know it's midsummer, so don't plan a camping trip. Cool. Do you need any action for us on that? Or does anyone have any other any questions on that? Sorry, I've been asking compound questions tonight, and I just wanted to recognize that probably best if I was answering asking simple questions, but she's not in the cards tonight. Short time or yeah, could be. <laughs> okay, then in that case, um, we can consider the minutes from uh, May 9th. Did every I'll give folks a second to look at them. Okay. I, I did review them, so I, I'll move approval of the minutes. Awesome. Thank you. I second. Thanks, Gabe. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstaining? Me. Okay. Wait, who abstained? You, Aaron, because he was. I, I wasn't there. there. Got it. Thank you. Okay, so that brings us to the end of our agenda. Um, I just think the only other thing I'll add is just to think about. Um, you know, Mike, we should think about how at a future meeting, how we want to um, staff the CVRPC. I don't, you know, the nominations and like the voting for all of the subcommittees just went through um, is or is going through right as we speak. So it's not, I don't think a major rush, especially if Gabe uh, was already going to be attending the main board meetings. Um, but looking forward, uh, it might be good to think about getting one other person. Um, especially because I think sharing the duties is would be great. Or maybe that was just me. But. Marcella, when are you heading out? Early June. Okay. Yeah. So I, I know Jeff had expressed some interest, but if there's others, I mean, I, I, you know, I think we had originally talked like I would, would was planning on going into the primary role in June, but I don't have to do that. Uh, oh, did there, we talk about that? There are other people who would like to, take that that's great too happy to stay alternate or or something yeah else. yeah thanks for the reminder i can't i could, didn't remember if that's what we were going to do i guess the issue is we only have one really seat to fill gabe is on a subcommittee and would also fill the um the commissioners like the commissioner meeting so he can do that as an alternate but um might be nice to have a second just in case And then, yeah, however you want to do that at the board. Uh, it just depends on who's, you know, if both of you show up to the board meeting, uh, only the full commissioner would have a vote. Okay, cool. Yep. And we'd have to put put in an appointment request to city council to appoint the, the second. So yeah. Um, yeah. we'll put the RPC rep on the next agenda. And then if we, unless, unless, well, I guess we really can't vote on it tonight because it wasn't on the agenda, but then we can pass that on to city council and have them appoint the either the primary or the secondary, uh, depending on where Gabe wants to sit. Great. So we'll just get some thought to that. Okay. All right. Well, I think we're set with tonight, unless there's anything else or a motion to adjourn. I move to adjourn. Thanks, Ariane. Second. Second by Aaron. And we don't have to discuss this one, right? And all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Have a good night, everybody.